Was Scream 4 doomed from the start because it was released too soon? In this video, we're going to explore why Scream 4 was far ahead of its time and how this may have contributed to the film's relatively poor box office performance compared with the other entries in the franchise. I'm Michael Myers 101, and it's finally time for another analysis video. I realize it's actually been five years since I did my last analysis video discussing whether Michael Myers is human or supernatural. I'll put a card to that video up above. Uh, so I'm really excited to be able to finally make another video like this again and for the chance to talk about what I feel is a very underrated film. Uh, I've personally had a soft spot for Scream 4 because I feel it's the Scream movie that sort of represents my generation and also introduced Kirby Reed, probably my favorite character in the entire franchise, much more on her later. Uh, to get started, I wanted to explain why I decided to make this video in the first place. I realized that lately, Whenever I've watched Scream 4, I've had this idea that many of the themes in the movie fit so well into today's world. Uh, last year, I also saw the success of Scream 2022, but I feel that for all the credit it's gotten, Scream 4 was actually the movie that pioneered a lot of the ideas that Scream 2022 was based on and praised for. At times, it almost feels like people are giving all the credit to Scream 2022 and forgetting that Scream 4 even exists. Uh, this made me wonder if anyone else was thinking about uh, this idea of Scream 4 being ahead of its time. So I did some research and actually found others uh, across many different sites who were discussing this, and I'll be referencing them throughout this video. Uh, for example, right here on YouTube, I found two other videos addressing this very idea, one from Michael Chu and one from the Horror Daddies. Uh, they both give very in-depth summaries of the film, as well as point out areas where it was ahead of its time. I also found a Reddit post where someone poised the question of why Scream 4 flopped, even though it was the sequel to a successful trilogy and time had gone by to build nostalgia. And the comments others also insinuated that one of the issues was that Scream 4 was just ahead of its time. So in this video, I'm going to start with some background history and by explaining why people consider Scream 4 a failure in the first place. I'll then uh, cover some of the reasons I've heard as to why Scream 4 failed. Finally, I'll go over the four key areas where I believe Scream 4 was ahead of its time and how these areas may have contributed to the film's poor performance. So why is Scream 4 considered a failure? It seems like Scream 4 is kind of the black sheep of the family. It wasn't part of the original trilogy and it isn't part of the new requel series. It's just kind of there on its own. And, you know, to make matters worse, when Scream 4 was released in 2011, it had the worst box office performance of all six movies in the franchise so far. This also contributed to a massive 11-year gap before a sequel would finally be released in 2022, not a strong indicator of a successful film. Uh, in contrast, for example, its sequel Scream was released in January 2022. By February 2022, Scream 6 had already been announced. By June 2022, production had already begun on Scream 6, and by March 2023, Scream 6 was playing in theaters. So what's believed to be the cause of Scream 4's failure? I've seen a lot of uh, talk about the fact that it was released too near to the end of the original trilogy, so it was basically at a point where no one was missing Scream yet, and no one was asking for a Scream 4 when they felt the story had come to a satisfying conclusion at the end of Scream 3. Uh, Beyond the Mask did a video titled, Did Scream 4 Kill the Franchise, where he provided a few reasons why he believes Scream 4 underperformed, reasons that I've also seen backed up by many others. Uh, one cause he cited was a decline in the interest in the slasher genre at the time, with horror being dominated by supernatural and found footage movies. I can confirm this definitely rang true for me and my friends at the time. When Scream 4 was released in 2011, I don't even remember it coming out, but I do remember talking with my friends about going and seeing Paranormal Activity 3. Fast forward to 2018, and the release of David Gordon Green's Halloween and the slasher genre was starting to take off again. In fact, in Rotten Tomatoes' 2018 Year in Review article, they even had a section about Halloween titled, Halloween Rejuvenates the Slasher Genre. Beyond the Mask also mentioned that audiences didn't like the nostalgia factor Scream 4 relied on at that time. The key here is that all three of these issues could have been avoided if the film had been released at a later date. So why do I believe that Scream 4 was ahead of its time? I think there's four key areas to focus on. First, it has the requel nostalgia-fueled format that I touched on a moment ago. 
Second, it deals with the theme of internet fame. Third, it showcases the growing pervasiveness of technology. Fourth, it displays the growing popularity of nerd culture. So now let's expand on how Scream 4 was ahead of its time in each of these areas and how this contributed to Scream 4's downfall. First up is Scream 4's requel format. Now, first we have to ask ourselves, What's a requel? Well, the very sequel to Scream 4, Scream 2022, uh, gave us this definition. Uh, Mindy Meeks Martin uh, tells us, You can't just reboot a franchise from scratch anymore, but you can't just do a straight sequel either. You gotta build something new, but not too new. It's gotta be part of an ongoing storyline, new main characters, but supported by and related to legacy characters. Not quite a reboot, not quite a sequel. This description absolutely applies to Scream 4. It wasn't a straight reboot or remake where they just start the story over again or remake the original movie like Casino Royale or Rob Zombie's Halloween. It's still technically a sequel that comes after Scream 3 and is part of the ongoing storyline. However, it has a new group of main characters, Jill, Olivia, Kirby, Robbie, Charlie, and Trevor, who are now in high school, basically going through a similar situation like the characters in the original movie, since the killers are trying to replicate the original. However, they're still supported by and related to the legacy characters, Sydney, Dewey, and Gail. Jill is even Sydney's cousin, and we see a lot of interactions between the new and legacy characters throughout the movie. So I feel the requel title absolutely applies to Scream 4, just as it applies to Scream 2022. As I mentioned before, Beyond the Mask touched on the problem with the requel format in his video. Specifically, he said Scream 4, quote, relied too much on the nostalgia factor, which, at that time, in 2011, wasn't a common thing. People were still searching for new things to watch, and because of it, the format of Scream 4 felt dated. However, now, today, people love nostalgia. They enjoy watching things from the past. They enjoy callbacks." End quote. This quote shows that he believes that Scream 4 was hurt by trying to follow the requel format back in 2011, and that it could have performed better had it been released at a later time. As proof of this, after 2011 we had several requels that performed extremely well, such as Star Wars Episode 7, The Force Awakens, and Halloween 2018, not to mention the very sequel to Scream 4, Scream 2022. So I think it's safe to assume that the film would have performed better utilizing the requel format if it had been released at a later date. Second is the theme of internet fame. We see this especially with Jill, since we learn that her entire motivation for becoming the killer was to become famous by basically becoming Sydney. We also see Robbie is always filming and posting everything to his website, hoping to be a trendsetter as well. This is also one of the areas where I feel that Scream 4 is underrated. In almost every Scream killer countdown list I've seen, Jill is described as having the weakest motivation out of all the killers in the entire franchise. However, I recently saw Beyond the Masks Who Was the Most Evil Ghostface video where he ranked Jill as the most evil in the franchise because she killed her own mother and friends and also wanted to kill her cousin, all just so she could become famous online. The other killers were all tricked, pressured, manipulated, or were trying to get revenge on someone who they felt had wronged them. Jill just wanted to get famous at any cost, which I agree is the most evil motivation in the franchise. It's like Jill says in her speech at the end of the movie, we all live in public now, we're all on the internet, how do you think people become famous anymore? You don't have to achieve anything, you just gotta have fucked up shit happen to you. Uh, this actually reminded me of Michelle Carter, who was convicted of involuntary manslaughter in 2017 for encouraging her boyfriend to kill himself in 2014, so she could become famous uh, by being able to tell the tragic story of his death from her point of view as his girlfriend. Uh, of course, in Scream 4, Jill kills her ex-boyfriend so she can blame the murders on him and become more famous. The issue is this mentality is much more applicable now than it was back in 2011. I feel that in 2011, not many people were actually making video content online, and even less were trying to actually become famous or make a living from that content. However, these days, it's become a legit business. Now, so many teens around the age of the characters in Scream 4 are trying to become the next star social media influencer, and there are entire training courses for people who want to make a living by getting famous online. Uh, with so much increased competition to break through and become famous, I'd argue that uh, there are more and more people like Michelle Carter and Jill Roberts in the world uh, who would try to get famous at any cost. 
Uh, to further this point, I found a Gizmodo article titled, I've been wrong about Scream 4 for 10 years, where the author talks about how today, a killer who hopes to murder and lie their way to becoming internet famous seems shockingly plausible. 10 years ago, maybe a little less so. In this way, I feel that Scream 4 would have been more relatable and therefore maybe more scary or entertaining to audiences today than it was when it was released back in 2011. Uh, to finish this point, there's a very applicable quote from Rotten Tomatoes' top 10 horror franchise list where they said, quote, We know that Scream 4 wasn't too popular in 2011, but time has been kind to Craven's assault on internet fame. The third point is the pervasiveness of technology. In the movie, we see how technology is becoming a bigger and bigger part of everyday life, especially for the high school students. We see the characters mentioning social media sites like Facebook and Twitter for the first time in the series. We hear Charlie talk about there being a school club for Nintendo Wii Fit. Uh, we also see the scene where everyone's cell phones go off in class when the news gets out about the first two murders, showing that everyone is getting their news on their cell phones before actually hearing anything from school announcements or police like before. There's also the scene where Sidney asks Robbie about how he films his entire high school experience and posts it to the net, and he replies, everybody will be doing it someday. Furthermore, we have both Gail and the killers using numerous webcams, cameras, etc. And we have Jill telling Sydney how people got to see this shit. It's not like anyone reads anymore when describing her reasoning for filming the murders. The problem here is the view of technology is much more realistic and relatable today than it was back in 2011. In 2011, we didn't have as many people on social media sites as we do these days. From my research, there's been a 20% increase since 2011 to today, accounting for a fifth of the U.S. population. I also feel that the idea of everyone getting their news from their cell phones so quickly, as we saw in the classroom scene, seems much more realistic today than it was back in 2011. Many people didn't even have smartphones back in 2011, especially high school students who didn't have much money and don't have jobs that would require the latest phones. However, these days it seems that younger and younger kids are getting high-end smartphones since they've become such a common necessity. We also see the truth in what both Robbie and Jill said. We really do see uh, so many social media influencers basically filming their entire day-to-day -day lives and posting it all online. Also consider how many videos people watch these days versus the amount of reading they do. Maybe audiences today would have been able to better connect with a film that represented technology this way. The final point is the popularity of nerd culture. We've seen over the years how nerd culture has become more and more mainstream across social and gender lines. I believe Scream 4 really leaned into this. How exactly? Well, there's one character in Scream 4 that I mentioned at the beginning of this video who completely embodies this point, Kirby Reed, who I believe is one of the most awesome characters in the entire franchise. You know it. I feel that Scream 4 really utilized Kirby to show how common nerd culture was becoming. I found a Collider article about Kirby titled, Scream 4 blended the cool girl and nerd trope to make one of its best characters. The article discusses how, at first, Kirby seems like just a typical 2000s cool girl, but then we see another dimension to her throughout the film, especially when she starts rattling off all the horror movie knowledge towards the end of the movie. I believe the key here is the combination of Kirby being cool and being a nerd, which would seem to be a contradiction, but shows how it was starting to become normal to be a nerd, because even the cool person can still be a nerd, which I feel was uh, very forward thinking. We can also apply the same point to gender. I saw another article about Kirby from Fangoria titled, Wanted, More Horror-Loving Ladies Like Scream 4's Kirby. This article talks about horror movie nerd culture from a gender perspective, and mentioned how Scream 4 was one of the first times we saw a female character as the nerd in a horror movie. It mentions how usually in the past, men would fill that stereotype. We see examples of this even within the Scream movies, with heroes like Randy Meeks and villains like Billy Loomis and Stu Mocker. All three are men who are obsessed with horror movies. The article talks about how the women in the earlier movies kind of every once in a while throw out a horror reference, but a lot of the times what they're saying isn't even correct. Uh, now we take a look at the Scream movies that have come out uh, much more recently, and we have Mindy Meeks Martin, who's a huge horror nerd and gives the rules in Scream 2022 and Scream 6. It's just another way that Scream 4 was ahead of its time, showing that nerd culture was becoming more mainstream regardless of gender. 
Now, if Kirby was the character who best embodied uh, mainstream nerd culture, I think the scene that best showcased it was the Stabathon scene. Even leading up to it, we had Olivia, who is supposed to be the school's hot chick, asking Jill and Kirby where the Stabathon is going to be held, so we can assume she was planning on attending if she hadn't been killed. Uh, then when Kirby arrives at the Stabathon, she calls Jill and uh, tells her, you know, I just crash landed on Planet Dork, uh, giving the audience that acknowledgement that the event should really be considered something that isn't cool. Yet, uh, Kirby is still going anyway, even though she is filling the cool girl trope as we discussed earlier. Then we see her ending up having a good time and complimenting Robbie and Charlie on organizing the event. We even see some cool looking guys wearing varsity jackets hanging out in the huge crowd. Uh, with all this taken together, uh, we see that the event seems like a very mainstream event, even though it's technically you know, this dorky gathering. So what's the problem with this? Uh, again, I feel uh, this point is another example of something that audiences today could relate to more than audiences back in 2011. I feel that society has continued to become more and more nerdy since Scream 4's release. Uh, the mainstream fandom surrounding superhero movies is something that comes to mind thanks to the MCU. Yes, MCU had uh, already begun when Scream 4 was released, but it was still very early on. Uh, the original Avengers movie hadn't even come out yet, so it was basically just the origin stories for the main Avengers superheroes at that point. I think video games are another area where we see this. Video games were usually considered to be for nerds, but around the time of Scream 4's release, I started to see uh, more and more people getting into video games, even adults and some of the cool kids in school were playing. Today this is magnified, with popular streamers who have huge audiences and massive gaming tournaments that seem to become popular soon after Scream 4 was released. Today we uh, also see more and more girls playing games, which seemed almost unheard of uh, when I was growing up. Now I'm not saying these issues were the only factors that hurt Scream 4. For example, Beyond the Mask also pointed to a bad marketing campaign as another key factor which is still something that has just as much potential to seriously hurt a movie at the box office today as it did back then. Uh, there are also some who say that Scream 4's underperformance was because the film just wasn't that good. Uh, I definitely agree that the quality of a film uh, will of course contribute to its box office success, but there are also many examples where this wasn't the case. Just take a look at The Nun. It got terrible reviews from almost everyone who saw it, yet it still made over $365 million and is considered a massive financial success. On the other side of the spectrum, just this year, we had Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 and Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves. Both films received rave reviews and both were considered flops because they didn't make the amount of money they were expected to at the box office. So there are definitely other factors that can affect how a film performs besides the actual quality of the movie. In conclusion, I feel that Scream 4 did come out too soon to be appreciated uh, as much as it could have. As the Gizmodo article I mentioned earlier puts it, it's actually hugely entertaining, wildly smart, and way ahead of its time as a dissection of a future that had not yet come to fruition. But as we see so many times, it's always tough being one of the first to do something when the rest of the world hasn't quite caught up yet. But let me know what you think in the comments. Do you think Scream 4 was ahead of its time? Do you think it was released too soon, or do you think it would have had a similar level of success if it had been released later? Also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. These analysis videos take a lot of work, so I definitely appreciate it as it really helps out the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.